Welcome to another edition of Money Talk with Melanie. I am your business diva, Melanie Collette, and welcome. I am broadcasting live from beautiful Cape May County, New Jersey, and actually today is actually uh, like not beautiful at all because um, the weather is absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> it really is just awful. Uh, raining and nasty and disgusting. It's just not, it's just very bad outside. But regardless of that, uh, I'm coming to you via High, Pla High Plains Planet Talk Radio and SHR Media. Very excited. Uh, my guest today, who I'm waiting to call in, haven't heard from him yet, but I did confirm that I'm going to be speaking with him, is um, Sean, it's Sean, come on, Melanie. Uh, Sean Worthington, who is, uh, he's a lead scientist at CloudCoin, and he also is the author of a book, Beyond the Coin, The Future of Digital Currency. So I'm very excited that I'm going to be speaking with him today. Um, hopefully, anyway, that I'm going to be speaking with him today because I haven't heard from him yet. So I'm a little nervous when that happens, but I did uh, confirm earlier today so that should that should be happening <laughs> that should that should totally totally be happening um but uh besides that there's lots going on in the news today you know um goodness gracious uh so apparently here here's the thing um President Trump made some comments. They're work, they're working on it. I have to talk about like the primary thing in, in the in, uh, in, in the news today. Um, it is that you know they're they're working on this on this deal, and uh, it's supposed to be um, supposed to be going really well, et cetera, et cetera. But the only problem is that the message got a little bit stepped on. Because President Trump uh, made some comments and somebody somebody ratted him out, basically, which is kind of, which is really you know a shame. <laughs> Good afternoon, hi, Facey people. I I think I didn't make. I'm not sure if I made this public or not. I was supposed to make this post public and I made it private by accident. Those of you who are in SHR Media Land and High Plains Planet Talk Radio Land, um, I, I'm talking about my Facebook. Uh, live post. It looks like it's not public, which is very, very silly on my part. But anyway, I I'll make it. I I I'll take care of it later. But that being said, apparently there there was some disparaging comment made about um, this country, about about some of the African countries, and about Haitian <sighs> and, and about Haiti. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. Because they seem to have been uh, making some good progress, and then now, like it's like they're, they're not. N now it's like that's all that's all kind of gone to pot now, which it shouldn't be the case. But that's kind of the way some of these things uh, tend to work, unfortunately. So I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen there. They're, they they also have to get a budget done by this time next week, by next Friday. They're supposed to have a budget done, and uh, if they don't, that that means that the government's going to shut down, and and that's that's definitely not a good look either. So I, I don't know, um, I don't know how that's gonna how that's gonna shake out for any of us. Um, that being said, there's there's uh, there are other things in the news besides DACA. And here, listen, hey Doug, hey Levon, hey Jeffrey. Jeffrey Booker, how are you? I was just thinking about you today, Jeff. I haven't heard from you in a minute. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna send out a search crew. Um, but uh, we have a lot to get done, and we look. 
I love what President Trump is doing policy wise, but we all we know how this ends, right? It ends the it ends the same way every single time something like this happens. It ends the same way, which is his message ends up getting stepped on. And that that's something that we, we don't need. And I'm not talking, you know, my conservative friends are probably going to be like, you're talking bad about President Trump, but I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, dude, you're doing great things. Stop stepping on your message. Like, you're, you're, kill, like you're killing us. Stepping on your message. And, and listen, not for nothing. I mean, I mean Dick Durbin, I, 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 I feel like that's some violation of, of, like, the political bro code, right? Like, I'm pretty sure that he wasn't supposed to be um, saying that either, like, in, inside of a private meeting. But on the flip side, I, I, President Trump probably thought everything was good and that he was comfortable or whatever. I don't know. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that it happened because we were, like, seemed like we were we were starting to really get somewhere. You know, the Dow is, is on its way up to 26,000. It broke 25,000. The mainstream media hardly talked about it. Um, companies are giving bonuses left and right. Fantastic. But, of course, the media is not talking about it. But all the media is talking about um, is, 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 is this one, is this comment and saying he's a racist. And we know that that's where it's going to go. Hello, Scott. We know that that's where it's going to go. I don't know. Who's saying the song? Bonnie Ray. Let's give him something to talk about. How about we not? Give him something to talk about, please. Can we, like, just not leave anything on the table to talk about but all the good stuff? I mean, I get it. People are not leaving. Um, people are not leaving their countries to come here because they're awesome. We all know this. But, dude, like, okay, you can't. Like, you can't. You just can't, you know, and and, and, I, I, and, and then, you know, it, it gets back to like, instead of talking about all the positive things in social media, people like me, you know, not for nothing. I'm the first vice president of, uh, of the uh, Federation of Republican Women here in New Jersey. I'd like to be talking about policy, but I'm not on my social media. I'm talking about this. And, you know, it's just more work for us when you do this, dude. Like, just stop. Like we're trying to help. <laughs> but you, you got to, you got to, no, no politician there is your friend, President Trump. Nobody. So, like, you got to pretend you're talking to your priest. <laughs> just use the same kind of language as if you were talking to one of your grandkids' kindergarten classes. Use that, use that approach. He's, 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 he's making me tired. I'm just saying. He's making me tired. And I know, Doug, they crucified Reagan too. But I thought they waited until he got out of office to do that. And, and you're right, Scott. Miserable crowds do love negativity. Misery loves company. They're super duper um, ticked. Um, for, uh, because they lost the election and, and, uh, and, and they're not going to let it go. That's pretty clear. But anywho, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I am your one and only business diva, Melanie Collette, and we will be back in a moment. We recently witnessed the Dow surpassing the 25,000 mark. Numerous major corporations are expanding operations, and Donald Trump's tax cuts are coming to fruition. But killjoy Democrats want to derail the Trump tax cut train. Hello, I'm Ron Edwards. On today's page from the Edwards Notebook, Mr. I Want to Tax Everything That Moves and Breathes, New York Governor Cuomo said that his overtaxed, in-debt Commonwealth of New York is going to sue over the new tax law, which he said would harm his state through its limit on state and local tax deductions. The new tax law caps the state local tax salt deductions at $10,000, which has been a particular concern for elected officials in New York and other high-tax states. And that's where the problem is, high-tax states. Mr. Cuomo, long before Donald Trump ran for office, 
New York was for decades overtaxing both residents and businesses. Your government and those before you accumulated a huge debt of over $62 billion. Why not do the right thing, sir, and lower your state tax and spending madness? You purposely ignore the successes of Florida and Texas, which have both lower taxes and budget surpluses. Maybe you should be sued for overtaxation, inhibiting regulations, and asinine spending levels. I'm Ron Edwards. Sponsored by the Tri-County Liberty Coalition. My name is David Barnett, and I've been helping people buy and sell small and medium-sized businesses since 2008. So far this year, I've gone on five vacations. It's because I've got my own business. When you get tired of being managed by someone else and you decide that business ownership is right for you without the risk of starting your own unproven enterprise, then come over to businessbuyeradvantage.com. There are over 100 YouTube videos on buying and selling businesses that you can watch for free. That's businessbuyeradvantage.com. Who likes paying taxes? Nobody. That's why Eva Rosenberg from TaxMama.com wants you to pay less of them. Read Small Business Taxes Made Easy and learn how legally hiring your spouse and children can slash your taxes. Learn how to set up a business plan that minimizes taxes, the benefits of setting up an exit plan, how to avoid getting audited, and how to legally increase your deductible expenses with better record-keeping techniques. Don't let the IRS squeeze you out of every penny. Visit TaxMama.com. Click on Ask a Tax Question to get free answers to your tax and business questions. That's TaxMama.com. And welcome back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I am your business diva, Melanie Collette. And uh, I'm having trouble getting in touch with my guest, but I'm going to give it another try here. See if I can... Uh, Oh, wait a minute. He's supposed he's supposed to be calling me. I'm getting word from his publicist that he is going to be calling me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be patient here and see if I can get him. And actually it looks like look like look like he was calling. I apologize. This is radio. Dead air is a bad thing. Look like he was calling, but it wasn't coming through. So I'm going to be proactive here and Sean. call him. Hi, Sean. This is Melanie from Money Talk with Melanie. You are live on the air here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing very well. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, no problem. I know I couldn't, I could, for some reason, I could not make that work. I don't know if there was some kind of hiccup or law. We are having a like kind of a storm where I am, so that could be interrupting the uh, situation here. Mm-hmm. So, but welcome, welcome to the show. I'm very glad to have you. Cryptocurrency, as you might imagine, is one of the uh, most popular topics uh, here lately on my show. So I'm excited to have you here. Now, I did not, because I was so concerned about connectivity, I did not give you a, a proper um, introduction as far as your bio is concerned. What are, is there anything that you'd like uh, the audience to know? There's plenty here. Sure, I'll just. To say real quick that I'm a computer science instructor and I've been teaching computer science for about 17 years now. I have written a book called Beyond Bitcoin, the Future of Digital Currency, and I also have a patent pending on my own digital currency. It's called CloudCoin. I'm working on a PhD in information systems. That's my bio. Excellent. Excellent. I don't, I don't know what it is about about the publicist folks, folks around us who, who listen, I, I love love my publicist. <laughs> the, the pieces. But to buy, here's the thing. By the time you start doing radio, your bio is super long, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. like, that's, like that's the problem. By the time you get to the point where people are asking you to talk about stuff, that's because you've mm-hmm. done a lot of stuff. Right? That's exactly it. Yes. So, so your bio ends up being super long. But anyway, uh, I love it. Thank you so much for being here. I have so many questions. You're about um, the fifth, I'm thinking about the fifth cryptocurrency expert that I've had on my show. Um, and nice. yeah, so I'm really, and I don't even know where to start. Uh, let's start in, in the beginning. Let's Let's talk a little bit about um, the difference between now uh, for, for some of my audience who have not um, who are not familiar with cryptocurrency at all, let's let sure. give the quick and dirty 
on what cryptocurrency is. Let's do that. Yeah, if we can just take a little step back, and that is what is money? Because mm. that's a big uh, topic of conversation. We've got some people that have Nobel Prizes in economics that are saying that Bitcoin's not money. And we have actually the past chairman of the Federal Reserve said that gold is not money. So there's some arguments about what money is. And what we've been able to figure out is that monetary systems are basically databases. And the money plays the role of data. And so we write data on a lot of things. We can write it on gold. We can write it on silver coins. We can write it on paper money. We can write it on hard drives in the case of Bitcoin. And we can also write it in JPEGs with cloud coins. And we're now even writing it in the mind. So we're finding out that money is, in fact, data. And the problem with digital money, any kind of digital money, is that it's easy to copy and paste it. It's easy to manipulate and change it. It's easy to delete it. And Bitcoin was really the first currency to be able to figure out how to make it so that uh, the money had physical integrity and cannot be counterfeited. Interesting. Okay. And that that's a good point. Now, money used to be something else, right? Before it was really data. Yeah, there's a lot of terms that economists use to describe money. And I can look at those terms and I can say, okay, this relates to uh, databases in this way. I can see how that they're trying to use database terms, but they're not quite doing it right. Well, that, that is for sure that they're not doing it right. They're not using So <laughs> because cryptocurrency, and it's not really emerging. I mean, it was emerging 10 years ago, right? <laughs> now it's kind of well, here. You know, um, people have tried to do digital currencies for a long time. One of the most successful ones was called eGold in California. And what happened is that they, a lot of people put gold into a vault and they issued some digital money based on that. But then the state of California just kicked in the door and went to the vault and took all the gold and closed the whole thing down. And that destroyed that digital currency. It was doing billions of dollars to the business. So we have to have a digital currency that cannot be just destroyed by some government or some bureaucracy. And the Bitcoin was the first one to solve that. They did that by creating a database which you can write to and you can uh, read from, but you can't delete anything, you can't change it. And that's the blockchain. And that's what allows us to track all the money so we know who has it and there's no counterfeits and there's no um, uh, forgery. So it, it was the first one. Indeed. Now, the, now the, um, the blockchain is different from what you all are doing, unless I'm understanding that incorrectly. It's different from what Cloudcoin is doing. Absolutely. So we have a new technology that is only used with Cloudcoin. And instead of trying to track every transaction that ever happens and follow the money from transaction to transaction, what we do is we have a counterfeit detection system. And so we've got all of these uh, detection agents all over the world. And every single one of our Cloudcoins has a bunch of like pass ports in them and when you give it to somebody you check all the passports with all these different countries and nationalities to make sure that they are real and that's how we uh, trade we just check to see if the money's real or not interesting and so now with the blockchain there's a possibility and nobody really talks about this I, I had a, a cybersecurity expert that um, that talked about it briefly but the blockchain doesn't Aren't there possible ends to the blockchain? Aren't there possibilities that the blockchain could break? Absolutely. And so there's a lot of them, and the blockchain just uses a very insecure system to begin with. But uh, basically it's not scalable, which means the more people that use it, the slower it gets. You can have a hacker that tries to go in and just make it slow by spamming uh, transactions, which will slow the whole system down. And then you also have a situation in which it's not quantum safe and all of the information is all available to the public and anybody with a quantum computer that has it set up right, and this will be within the next 10 years, can then crack that blockchain. There's also a consensus problem in which you have a, if you have a majority of the servers, suppose like the Chinese government decided to put out 6,000 blockchain servers, they could actually take over the money. So there's a lot of different security threats, and I'm just scratching the surface there. That sounds like a lot of security threats, for sure. Now, how does the your cloud coin, 
which you which you say is actually not a cryptocurrency. It's a cloud currency, right? That's right. And so, what, how, how does the cloud currency uh, contrast with the cryptocurrency? So, first of all, we don't have any mining that goes on because mining is actually unnecessary and it's counterfeiting. So, the way that Bitcoin runs their network is that they allow uh, their miners, so-called miners, to take guesses at trying to guess a number, and if they guess the right number, they get to have a Bitcoin. This is very expensive in electricity and a lot of expensive in space and, and the heat that's being wasted. With Cloudcoin, we have a set amount of Cloudcoins, and they're not produced. Our, we have the equivalent of miners, but they mine for la lost Cloudcoins, and so they get paid whenever they recover a Cloudcoin that has been permanently lost. With Bitcoin, there's been 4 million Bitcoins or more that have been permanently lost. And that's a big problem because if people lose all of their money, it, it, uh, there's no sense in using the system because it's supposed to track who, who gets what. Okay. Now you're going to have to backtrack for me just a little okay. bit. Just a little uh, bit on the mining because I did have somebody, I had somebody inquire about that maybe two weeks ago, and I said I was going to ask you about that. Um, so... Sure. Explain what Bitcoin mining is, like what the purpose is of the Bitcoin mining. So one of the problems or one of the issues is how do you fairly give out new money? Because you've got to create some money and then you've got to give it to people. And what's the best way to do that? And the way the blockchain solves that issue is by saying if you put up a server and your server handles all of these transactions, your server will then get to guess to see what the magic number is. And to begin with, the magic number was a small number, and you could guess it quite simply. But as time goes by, the number gets bigger and bigger and harder to guess. And so they uh, basically pay for their infrastructure by allowing people to guess and, and try to get these uh, new, to figure out what the number is so that they can uh, uh, create new blockchains and, I'm sorry, bitcoins and pay for the system. So is this a mathematical calculation that they're doing? How are they, like, what, what are the methods that they're using to do that? Well, it's really quite stupid, I think, because, uh, you know, there, there are now a couple of currencies that do not have any mining, and mining is absolutely unnecessary. But the idea is that you think of money as in terms of gold, and gold requires mining, so you want to have some way of to show proof of work, to show that you did some work and so that you get some money. And then Cloudcoin, we want to show proof of work too, because the whole economy is based on basically you. If you get money, it's because you've done some work, and you should only have money if you did work. But um, what they're doing is not really work. What they're doing is just guessing numbers, and it's not really productive work. So I don't know if that answers your question. They're just literally guessing numbers, spending lots of time trying to guess them as fast as they can. Yeah, that's what, I mean, I, I, I'm just like envisioning like a bunch of guys or statisticians or whomever in a room, literally, it's almost like futures trading, it sounds like. Well, you know, I don't, I, I would say it's a way of trying to make Bitcoin scarce. And because they're guessing, any one of the miners could win. And so it's all completely random. There's no such thing as doing good mining or bad mining. If you just do mining and you do enough of it, it's a number game, you're going to get some Bitcoins sometime. Okay. And so it's a, it's a, it's a weird system. And does, It seems to work. And does the mining affect the overall, and I, and I imagine it does, affect the overall price of of the Bitcoin, the overall value of like every everyone's Bitcoin account, because the way it's been explained to me is that there's only a certain amount of Bitcoin available. Yeah, so the the more scarce of the resource generally goes up in value. Right. And just to contrast, Cloudcoin has a set amount and it never goes up unless we do something called doubling, which everybody's money doubles. But um, they um, they want to reduce the amount of supply, they want to add some more, and this is the way that they've come up with figuring out how to get new Bitcoins into the system, and it's through the miners guessing the numbers. Okay, that, now that, that is a little bit scarier to me. <laughs> well, it's a big giant waste of electricity. 
Right. And it's very inefficient. And so it's it's so inefficient. If you like look at Cloudcoin, we are something like 10,000 times more efficient. And that allows us to, uh, it really gives us an economic advantage because we need to economize as human beings. Every animal needs to economize. And uh, the Bitcoin is not economically sound when compared to other currencies. Now, see, it, now it, it, it's funny because Bitcoin is like the, the, the top currency. Uh, somebody in the chat, I'm streaming live on Facebook, just so you know, and they were like, <laughs> somebody was like, okay, this conversation is over my head, but it's very interesting. <laughs> and, and, well, go ahead. It, there is a logical error, and I could tell you the story about the island of Yap just to illustrate it, but there was these, this island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, which was discovered by Europeans in the 1800s. When they found this island, they found in the village square that there was something a lot like the public ledger where they had all these raised platforms, one for each family. And they had these big stone coins that they would roll from one platform to another platform whenever they had a trade. And so they could track everybody's money by just looking at the public square and where these big stone coins were. And so the Europeans were able to figure out where they made the coins, and they went and made a bunch of them. But they were able to make them with iron tools, which made them much faster at making them. And so they show up to the island, they got all this stone money. They said they want to buy an island. And the islanders said, sure, we'll take your stone money. And they sold them an island. And these Europeans then went back and decided to get some more coins. And they made some. And they came back and they said, please build us houses. Please build us furniture. Give us servants. Make us roads and paths. And the islanders quit their farming. And they quit their animal raising. And they went to, to you know, cash in. And then a few months later, there was no food, and they all starved. They started to getting starved, and the Europeans had to leave because basically what had happened is there was a, a fraud going on. And so money is very important, and its job is to try to keep track of who did what value. And if somebody comes in and counterfeits it, it's very detrimental to our society. It certainly is. And now, is that the case with all cryptocurrency or just with Bitcoin? That <sighs> Well, with Bitcoin, what happens is that people see that people are making money. And whenever you see somebody making money, you're like, I want to do that. Because uh, you want to, you know, everybody wants to be rewarded and, and fit that, to fill that gap. But um, uh, what happens is there's a logical trap that's caused by the Federal Reserve, actually. The Federal Reserve comes and introduces a whole bunch of dollars into the system. People borrow against their houses. Right. They go out and they buy uh, Bitcoin with credit cards and with uh, home equity loans, and it causes the price to go up, and people see that, and they go in and they make this logical error that Bitcoin is more valuable than it is. And they start piling into it, and that's what we call a bubble, it's, but it's really like a logical loop. And sooner or later, it can't sustain itself, and it drops down. Now what we have is something called a bull trap where everybody says, oh, well, it may, maybe it will go back up. That's what we're in now. We see a big bull trap with Bitcoin. But uh, the, the, the people that are investing it, they're just trying to make money. They don't know anything about the fundamental values of Bitcoin. And they've created a bubble, and now it's popped. Now, the scary so, thing, now, now you scared me a little bit because when you said that, that people are, you know, um, mortgaging their homes to put money in Bitcoin and doing, I, I mean, the, the, kind of the last three things that you said were like major violations of personal finance 101, like, which yes. is don't, don't borrow money to invest. Like, you know, like, uh -huh. just don't like that. That is a big no, no. And I, I, absolutely, I, that's what causes all the bubbles in the stock market crashes and everything. It's a bad thing. And, and, and I, I just want to be clear to my audience, like that's a big no, no, no matter what you're investing in. Like, that is not something you do. And particularly uh, when you're talking about borrowing against your assets like a home. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, if you see your neighbor making a billion dollars, you want to do the same thing. But uh, what you don't realize is that he was, uh, you know, lucky enough to find a greater fool to sell it to. And you don't want to be the greater fool that, uh, is there when the bubble bursts, and unfortunately, it is bursting right now. Really, you think it's bursting right now? I haven't. I ha didn't check the financial news at all today. There was kind of a, a lot of stuff going on in politics, but I didn't. I did not hear anything major out of the cryptocurrency sector today. 
Well, you know, uh, of course. I didn't check my account it, either. It's really, it's really hard to to tell a bubble until you've actually gone through it. And so, what we saw is the price shoot up astronomically, hyperbolic, over the last uh, couple of months, and then it stopped going up, and then it went down, and it's kind of bouncing up and down. This is typical with a bubble. People are trying to figure out whether the bubble is real or not. But then what happens is, is these you get these what's called a bull trap. You get people that are still buying into it, thinking that it's going to go up, but then all of a sudden it goes down. And so we haven't got we haven't had the big giant drop that I predict, but I think it's going to happen within the next uh, month, certainly. And now we'll see. And, and see, I think most of, most at least people who believe in cryptocurrency will tell you that that's the exact time to buy, right? Like that's usually the, the, the advice. It's like whenever you have a big dip, like don't freak out, that's the time to, to, to buy more. <laughs> that's right. Right? But they might, but uh, that strategy, if it's a, what's called a bull trap, that's called the bull trap, where you think that everything is still good and it's the time to buy, and so you pile into it again, then all of a sudden it turns out it really wasn't the time to buy. What it really was was a bubble, and the bubble does collapse. And when it does, it's going to take you down along with it. Oh, goodness gracious. That, 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 okay. All right, I'm trying to breathe. Now, I, I'm doing some very minor, minor investing because I want to be able to tell my audience about it. And sometimes the best way to do it is to, um, is to, is to put, put both feet in. Now, I, I and, like I've told, like a, a couple of experts have told my audience, and as I have said to my audience many times, um, you know, you have to approach Bitcoin investing or crypto investing just like you would approach approach any other type of investing. You want, you never want to borrow in order to invest. Uh, don't invest money that you can't afford to lose, which who can afford right. to necessarily, but that it wouldn't bother you. Put it that way. All too much if you lost it. So, you know, you have to be like uber careful and diversify is it, it, yeah. really important. So, um, right now I'm still up despite all the dips. Wow. I've only been in for like two months, but, um, still it is. And somebody just asked if it's a retroactive stock and I wouldn't describe it as a retroactive stock. That's not to, to me the closest Thing, I would say it's closer to futures trading than. Well, so I don't know too much about investments, unfortunately, because I, you know, into the computer science behind it. Right. But you know, it is supposed to be a money, and a money is a type of asset, but it's not really an investment in the typical sense of an investment. Right. Uh, certainly, there's a lot of potential there. And what we're seeing now, I think, is that Bitcoin is not going to be the currency of the future. It just can't handle the load. And so we're, everybody's turning to other currencies, other digital currencies, to see if those might be the ones of the future. I think that all the stuff that's based on the blockchain is not going to be the future. But at the end of all of this fallout, because, I mean, when the automobile was invented, it was 12, 000, uh, 1,200 companies making them. And then within about 10 years, it shrunk down to three or four. Sure. So I think that we're going to see the same thing where, uh, you know, there's going to be a, a big fallout and the weak ones are going to be washed away. Because I think, I want to say there's like 1,200 cryptocurrencies, something like that. There's a ton. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, and, and, you know, there are a top few, but there's about 1,200. I, I had no idea until I had um, an expert on a week or so ago who was telling me that there were that many. I had no idea. He said, actually, there's thousands, but there's kind of like a top 1,200. Um, we're up against a break. When we get back, I want to talk about um, the security of the uh, the cloud coin versus the um, the crypto currency, Sure, if you would. Okay, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. We'll be back in a few minutes. My guest today is lead scientist. Uh, and uh, computer science instructor, also author of the book Beyond Bitcoin, A Future of Digital Currency. Uh, he is our guest today. We're talking to him about uh, cloud coin, about digital currency, about cryptocurrency. A very interesting conversation on the other side of the break. We're going to talk to him about the security aspects. Again, you're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome 
Welcome to this week's Money Talk with Melanie with your business diva, Melanie Collette. This week, we talk three first steps to start the new year off right. Step one, start tracking your net worth. Your net worth is the difference between your assets and debt. Paying attention to your net worth lets you know whether you should be cutting back or if you can splurge. Step two, create your financial calendar. Set appointment reminders for things like uh, remembering to pay your quarterly taxes or periodically pulling the credit report. Finally, step three, check your interest rates. Checking your interest rates is a great way to determine things like which debts you should pay off first or where you should open a savings account. And that's all for this week's Money Talk Minute with your business diva, Melanie Collette. Please remember to listen to Money Talk with Melanie Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 4 p.m. Central, or 2 p.m. Pacific Time on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. Hello, I'm Tim Hart. I'm the guy BZ hires due to his shameless contract with the SHR Media Network. To voice his promos, he'd like me to tell you that the Bloviating Zeppelin's Berserk Bobcat Saloon radio show can be found on SHR Media Network, Spreaker, and YouTube every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern and 8 p.m. Pacific, featuring right thinking from a left brain and doing the job the American media maggots won't. You'll find that the speech is free, but the drinks are not. There, in the saloon, just when safety pin manufacturers are running out of metal for the diapers of the leftists, BZ is sending his personal drones of freedom into the wheelhouses and ossicles of lovers of sovereignty and liberty nationally and globally. Broadcasting behind enemy lines in occupied California, BZ swears that no rights were harmed in the making of this promo. Power brokers use corrupt politicians, deceptive Islam, and lies from establishment media to turn the once shining city on a hill into the city of the blind. What do the elites fear? One man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me at SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Spreaker, iTunes, and YouTube for a different kind of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. It's your business, Diva, here, Melanie Collette. I'm inviting you to a pro seat as I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers and shapers in the world of business. Listen in and discover financial truths on a global, domestic, and household scale. Uncover topics that will impact your wallet today and in the future. Money Talk with Melanie airs Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. East, 2 p.m. West, right here on SHR Media at High Plains Pundit Talk Radio. You can't afford to miss it. Okay, and we're back. You're listening to Money Talk with Melanie. I'm your business diva, Melanie Collette. Oh, it's your business diva I, here, Melanie Collette. I am inviting I, you to a front row seat as I, I discuss some of the most intriguing details of wealth and finance with today's movers. There we go. I apologize. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I, I, at the last minute, decided, hey, let me play my new promo, and I got it from somewhere else, and I forgot that that was it was on repeat. I apologize, but anyway, I, I hope you guys like it. That's actually one of two um, new promos for my show. I'm really excited about it, and my my numbers have been wild, uh, um, really, really good. And so, thank you guys for um, for watching and for listening. I also want to thank my sponsors, the uh, the Tax Mama Eva Rosenberg. Now that we have a new tax law, I am sure you are going to want to go to her page, taxmama.com, and ask a free tax question. Um, she is an expert in all things taxes. She's also got two fantastic books, which are award-winning, um, Small Business Taxes Made Easy, and another book called Deduct Everything. I also want to thank uh, David Barnett at businessbuyeradvantage.com. Hey, with all this money and that, that's coming back and all these companies that are offering bonuses, you might want to consider investing in a franchise. If you are thinking about it, go to businessbuyeradvantage.com. He's got tons of instructional videos there, and he'll give you all kinds of fantastic guidance on um, how to do that. It's not as difficult or as expensive as it used to be. So that's businessbuyeradvantage.com. I wanted to make sure that I, um, that I mentioned that. Um, anywho, we are talking to, uh, to Sean Worthington. 
of uh, CloudCoin Global, and he's also a lead scientist and um, information technology instructor. Is that correct? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. And uh, and we're talking to him about uh, CloudCoin and cryptocurrency. And uh, before we went on to the break, I asked you about the security issues that are associated with um, cryptocurrency versus uh, cloud coin, which you, you've touched on a few of them. Um, it, like cryptocurrency, can that be hacked? Well, right now, scientifically, the only way that it could be hacked is theoretically by a quantum computer. And quantum computers have just come on the market, so you can buy them. And it's possible that our government has warehouses full of them, or maybe China has warehouses full of them, and that they are able to crack these things, theoretically. But uh, otherwise, without quantum computers, scientifically, they are uncrackable. Well, let, let's hope so. Now, now I have, I have heard different, well, let me, let, me, let me put it this way. Other experts have told me that they already have been hacked. And listen, no, like I didn't say I didn't say unhackable un un because actually they get stolen all the time. Right. And and there's a big huge risk because you might have four million dollars worth of uh, bitcoins and it's and it's all riding on one private key. And if that private key gets compromised, and what can happen is that they will hackers will actually install. Uh, print screen software so they can look at the code and see what you're doing and they can take it and steal uh, millions of dollars with the cloud coins I'm sorry uh, of uh, bitcoins Bitcoin. that is a big problem right that's a huge problem <laughs> that's a, that... yeah we've been actually working on how to stop hacking and we have some technologies that are helping them basically with uh, you have something called system, systematic risk, and you have something called um, uh, unsystematic risk. And the uh, difference is that one that you can mitigate and the other you can't. And the problem with the uh, blockchain is you've got this one private key, and you might have it on your computer, and you have a risk of being hacked. But if you copy that to make a backup so you can protect yourself against loss, well, now you've just doubled your risk of being hacked. Absolutely. If you if you put it up on a mail server or something so that you've got it up on the cloud, well, now you've tripled your risk. And so every time that you try, you've got a problem in which you've got risk of theft and you've got risk of loss. And with Bitcoin, it's really high. And with any cryptocurrency. Right, any cryptocurrency. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, it, how does um, CloudCoin compare to that, security-wise? Sure. So to begin with, there's no accounts. So human beings don't need to have accounts. This makes it so that nobody has to log in. There's no password to lose. All the money basically has passwords. All the money basically has accounts. And you can take the money and you can store it in different locations. You can put some of it in your email and some of it on your computer and some of it here and there. And that helps you to diversify your risk so that if you were to lose some, you wouldn't lose all of it. So you can and there's no it. way. So anywhere in the cloud, you can store it is what you're saying. Yeah, we actually have it so that we can store it online. And the problem, you know, the problem would then be, well, how, what about loss? Because you're going to be concerned about loss. But we've created a system in which is you cannot permanently lose your cloud coins. So if you actually do lose it, you can file a lost coin report and get it back in two years if it hasn't been spent. Now, yeah, so now you don't, yeah, I was just going to say, you don't have to worry about loss anymore. That means you can just worry about theft 100%. One of the first things that comes to mind, like I, I store, and, and listen, my, my cybersecurity expert friend like cringes when I say this, and and actually other friends of mine. Um, but I store a lot of things in in Google Drive. I know how bad that is security wise. I, I know. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah. do. I do. I do. I know. So, but but there's also inherent like rights information there. Like if if someone were to to um, decide to store it in their Dropbox. Mm -hmm. it, it, could there be a conflict there with Dropbox saying, well, that's actually ours because it's there? Like, 
could that be somewhere in that little agreement that we, that we click by when we that we don't actually read that that belongs to them Absolutely. if it's stored there? You know what I mean? It could, what could happen is that one of the Dropbox employees could just be looking through some data and notice that, and then just write it down, and then they've got your four million cloud, or your four million bitcoins. And so uh, that's a highly dangerous thing. There's something called SecureSafe.com, which is a server in Switzerland. I I recommend people store it there if they're going to do cloud-based storage because it's much more secure. But we've actually created something called Rated Data, and it takes data and shreds it and spreads it out all over the world. So if anybody was to get one server or even 10 servers, they wouldn't be able to put the data together. Oh my goodness. See that? Yeah, that, you know, Google, it's, it's kind of fun. Listen, I love Google. Google don't do anything to my accounts. Uh, and by love, I mean, I'm addicted to, but uh -huh. it's, it's just kind of like, it's just kind of funny from, from a, a technology perspective. How companies like that, you know, their their motto is "Don't be evil," and you know, from a business and technology perspective, they're kind of evil. Um, so, so. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's a big. There's a big uh, problem with that because yeah. uh, they actually uh, could be hacked by the Chinese government, and so the Chinese government gets your keys, and they don't care about uh, Google's reputation. They're going to use them to steal your money. I actually, uh, you know what, I'm going to have to go back and read. Uh, during my master's, I, I actually did a report on that very thing, Google's relationship uh -huh. with, with the government of China and that whole, that whole situation. And that was, gosh, years ago now. But, uh, you know, it's, it's funny you mention that because, you know, they're communists. So they're not Absolutely. like really into the whole, like, you know, your money is your money type situation. That's not how they do things in China. And Google's already shown itself that they don't really care about human rights or no. liberty. But they're going to cave as soon as the, their uh, profits are, uh, you know, come into question. So we can't trust them for, with our data, certainly. Oh, oy vey. Okay, so tell tell me. I, I actually, I, I thought I had a headache when I left school today. And now, now I have another, <laughs> I have another headache. Now, the, the cloud, the cloud um, currency as opposed to cryptocurrency. Uh, can can the cloud currency be affected by uh, EMPs? Can it? So uh, the way that our setup is we can be nuked and we still survive. So we don't have any systematic risk. We've got uh, locations all over the world, different hardware, different uh, people that run the servers, independent operators, different operating systems, different software. So if there, if there was any one event to happen, you know, unless the whole world is destroyed or something, uh, our currency is going to keep going. So if North Korea sent like an electronic signal to fry our, you know, components and our, our, our electrical grid, cloud currency would go unaffected by that. That's right. So as long as you get, you know, as long as you have internet access, because you have, it's a digital currency, you have to have internet. As long as you have internet, yes, it'll still work. But, of course, if there's no electricity, well, see, that's the funny thing. Yeah, about the, right, <laughs> well, if there's no, I was going to say if there's no electricity, there's no internet, but that's not really true. That just means there's no internet access. Well, we had a war with Saddam Hussein, and I was actually a veteran back during Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And we just could not bring down his internet because uh, it's it's a mesh topology and it's built to survive wars. Wow. So it's for. Wow. Yeah. And thank you for your service. That's incredible. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for, for being willing to do that. God bless you. Um, I, 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 okay. All right. So now you've opened up a whole, okay. So t tell us about uh, the book. So we've explored and, and, I hope everybody was, have, has been able to follow the cryptocurrency versus the cloud coin currency, which, which is a, a, like a, a breakthrough new type of digital currency. And, and is, is that what the, what the book focuses on? So the book focuses on uh, that as well as the possible futures of digital currencies. We talk about something called blockchain socialism. And that's something that actually they're doing right now in Venezuela. The Venezuelan government 
has created a blockchain. This blockchain tracks every transaction that the people do. They're assigning their people uh, account numbers on it, and they can basically take money from somebody, redistribute that wealth to somebody else. They can control everything and, and, and see what who's doing what. And this is uh, not a good thing.